Monsanto, who makes the bovine growth hormones, um, is a very large corporate player with, with fingers in all sorts of businesses around the world. RBST increases cow's milk production, and so it can increase the efficiency on a farm where they're producing more milk for the same number of cows. And so in order for the farmers to remain competitive in the industry, they will use RBST as a management tool to up their production. You have a cow that is producing more uh, milk over a period of time, it's like running an engine on uh, high speed. Uh, even though you take care of the machine, it, it, it has wear and tear and it's going to um, deteriorate. So, so those cows will, uh, in effect, have a shorter span, lifespan, productive span. It's a male calf, so it'll be shipped tomorrow uh, to market, where it'll be uh, either processed or raised for fuel. BST uh, is actually a compound that's been derived by genetic engineering so that we have synthetic bovine growth hormone available to us for injection into cows. Dairy farming in general is a, it can be a very grisly business behind the scenes. You know, people picture these uh, picturesque postcard versions of dairy farms, but the uh, uh, the way some cows, especially more in uh, high production conventional dairy, are uh, you know they'll be stanching 20, 22 hours a day in a barn with very little opportunity to exercise. They may be producing outstandingly for a few years, but it's going to cut the life of the, the cow in half. You know, you may get a few more gallons of milk out of them in that time. They're probably going to be very sick while they're producing it, and you're gonna bury them in the backyard a lot sooner than you would have wanted. The difference between organic and conventional is that organic you can't use any growth hormones, you can't use any commercial or synthetic fertilizers, no uh, um, uh, chemicals on corn fields. You can use antibiotics for instance on, on your cows but you have to, there has to be a really a justified use, a, a need for them but you have to get rid of the cow after, as in sell it to your neighbors, after you, you've, you've saved the cow's life. The reason we switched to organic was because we wanted a more sustainable price for the, for the milk itself. And um, also, I was pretty much organic anyway, so it was an easy switch. Uh, I, I didn't use much for commercial fertilizer and, and didn't do a whole lot of, didn't do any hormones for the cows. And this cow's name is Midge. She's a, she's a good cow. Don't want to tell her that too often because she'll go to her head. 
The organic segment of the milk market in Vermont has been growing a lot, and I think it, there are a lot of opportunities for people to get in to, to dairy farming through the organic market, and it's going to help save a lot of smaller family-sized farms. Huge market for organic dairy products. It's a very rapidly growing segment of the market, and there are a lot of consumers out there that are demanding and willing to pay for organic dairy products. Organic is considered to be a higher standard, both for having, you know, growth hormones, antibiotics not present in the milk. This is a, a single dairy uh, of organic milk in glass, old-fashioned glass bottles. They come in twice a week, and you can see it's starting to come down a bit, and we, when it's gone, it's gone. That's all the cows can produce. The uh, truck comes every two days, early in the morning, picks the milk up, takes it away. This is a glass of milk. <laughs> Anyone else want one?